So I am recording on this one. Um, and I'm live right now. I'm live on the Dr. Jerisa page. I was trying to share it. I, I don't know how to share it in this in this desktop version. So we're going to work on that the next time. Um, um, but I wanted to share this with Secure Fertility and also um, the Secure Fertility group and also my personal page, Jerisa. But I can't do this on the desktop. But um, at least I don't know how. I don't know how. Um, the last... It is breast cancer. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And it is also um, something else very near and dear to me, as many of you know, Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month. And so for a long time, October has been about that. You know, for years, October for me, okay, this that's my journey, um, has been about that. Um, I also am, um, and I have talked about this in the past, but I, um, I had an ex-fiance that um, I experienced um, domestic violence, and so also in October is uh, Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And it took one time, and I was like, "Uh, yeah, that's that's it." But um, that still is something that's very, very passionate about that I am bad passionate about. Breast cancer. Well, um, a lot of us know people, you know, know women and men. You know, men can get breast cancer too. Um, we know women that have survived, you know, I mean, I know so many breast cancer survivors. And so, you know, you see the survivors so much, you see all the pink and you see, and, and so, you know, for me, the focus in October had been about miscarriages and, you know, women that have lost babies and that are trying that are struggling, you know, to become moms. And that still is my focus, secure fertility. I'm adding secure fertility and faith because of this new journey um but this year you know this year i had my first mammogram i had my first mammogram in um in february you know it was recently my birthday and i'm like i gotta get this done you know i've been putting off this and i gotta get this done but at the same time when i'm you know thinking, okay, I got to get this done. I'm not thinking what the result is going to be. You know, I mean, I've had tests before. Um, another type of cancer I'm passionate about is colon cancer, cervical cancer, because I know women, I know women young, you know, in their thirties that um, have succumbed to cervical cancer and colon cancer. And so both of those have been, you know, kind of more, more passionate to me because of the closeness of it. And when I had my first mammogram, um, and so even before I get to that result, to have to mention this now, like, listen, I, I, I asked God, you know, why do I have to share this journey? You know, I don't want to, why, why I got, I don't want to, <laughs> why I gotta, you know, for any of us that ask God, why, you know, why I gotta, I don't want to share this journey. I've shared journeys, you know, and, and that was the response, you know, for, um, for those of us who, you know, pray or those believers that, um, sometimes you, it's hard to discern, you know, you want to make sure that the voice you're hearing is the voice of, you know, God versus the voice of the enemy. Right. So that, that, that tuggle, how do you know? Well, um, when you pray, Sometimes we pray real quick, you know, okay, thank you in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Um, but to take time afterwards and just sit, meditate. Meditation is powerful. Um, so when you have time to pray and wait some minutes after, um, that's the closeness to God because you already have invited him in. You've invited him into your life at that time. And so the voices that you will hear during that meditation period, it's going to be him. Thank you, Jesus. And so, um, I asked God, you know, why? And he said, well, you know what? You talked about your fertility journey. You know, you talked about the miscarriages. You talked about the fibro. You talked about you couldn't carry a baby. Like, what? what? I'm like, okay, well, but why do I have to share this journey? Like, this is, why? Why do, I mean, first of all, why am I having to go through this? Because you already told me this was benign. Like, the doctors already said this was benign. So, what, why are you bringing this back? Like, what? what's going on? And so... 
oftentimes, sometimes, all the time, you know, we really need to learn to sit in the moment because I can be so quick. I've learned through probably as an emergency room physician, you know, we do things so quick. I mean, it's like boom, 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 you know? And so I learned to be quick and not necessarily to sit sometimes in the moment and the moment of trials, okay? Um, to really gain a better understanding. It's easy to do that. Um, and so God says, you know what? Yeah, you need to share this journey as you have shared other journeys. There is a message in the meaning. And I said, okay, God, well, you're going to have to make it clear because I really don't want to do this. I really don't want to do this. I don't. I feel I really don't want to share this. Why? Why I got to? But okay, God, you're going to have to make it really clear. The message and the meaning of this for me because you're bringing this back you're bringing this back to me for some reason it's something i'm supposed to get that i did not get in february when i had my first mammogram and in july when i went back to have the other mammogram and so we gonna get it this time you know god can bring you to him and sometimes it's not necessarily for you it can be for you it's something you can always gain but it can also be for someone else and um, we're giving away mammograms. I wish I could hashtag. I can't even hashtag. I can't even type nothing in with this desktop. Oh my God. But, um, we're giving away 10 mammograms. So if you're watching, you are sharing this, definitely you can tag. I'm upset because I want to be able to tag, but I'll just say their name. I'll say their name instead of tagging some of the breast cancer surviving women that I know. And, um, we're going to be giving away mammograms in the honor in the honor of, you know, 10 women that have been spoken about in, um, you know, within the comments. So definitely share this, like this. There is a message there and there is a meaning. I've been praying. I did not rush to get my biopsy for real. I did not rush to get my biopsy because I can do that. I did that with my thyroid. We can talk about that. But I didn't rush to get it because I wanted to sit in the moment. I wanted to sit and see what it is I'm supposed to gain from this that can help me, someone else, you know, me, you know, because I want, I want to be a better Christian, you know, I want to help more. So what is it that I'm supposed to get that will also bring me closer to you and to seeing you, you know, work more in my life and for other people? Because we help people all the time. We get mammograms, we get pap smears in the January. Um, and this month, we're now going to start giving away mammograms to the uninsured here in South Florida. So happy that we are able to do that, me and my husband, the other wonderful Dr. Barry, Dr. Adam Barry. So um, I had my first mammogram. And, um, you know, as physicians, we can be the worst of patients. Lord have mercy. And I'm pushy. I can be really pushy, especially when it comes to my health, my family, my friends. <laughs> Wait, what? So they called the office and talked to the staff because they wanted to get um, a previous mammogram report that I had. And so, you know, this is during the work hours. They're busy. My, my doctor, of course, is, you know, Dr. Barry, Dr. 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 Adam Barry. And then I do have a separate ob guy. Um, and her office has been calling me, calling me, calling me. But um, they they got the report at my husband at you know my and my husband's clinic you know because we can order our own stuff you know um, for the most part not everything not everything okay <laughs> but yes we he can order a mammogram he can order an ultrasound from me and so they got the report and so one of the um, front desk staff I called because I'm thinking I'm just gonna get a result and I'm also thinking the result's gonna be normal I'm not thinking I'm just not thinking you know that the result would show anything. And so um, they wanted more information. You know, the radiologist wanted to know if I had a previous mammogram, which I did not have, but automatically I'm like, why you want another mammogram? What's going on? What, 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 would you see something? Okay, hold up. Let me call. Let me call the radiologist. <laughs> Let me call them now, right? And so Things happen fairly quickly because um, that's just, like I said, I've just learned to do that as an emergency room physician. Um, boom, boom, boom. And so I actually got, um, I talked to the radiologist and he said, well, I really just want, I see some calcifications. 
Okay, so I see some calcifications. Now, previously, I've had a fibroadenoma that was back in 2005. I had a um, core biopsy, and then I had a fibroadenoma removed from my right breast. But those are benign. We know that. You know, those are benign. I felt that oh, real quick, real quick. Mammograms are encouraged at 40. But before that, 20, listen, you need to do your monthly exams. Mammograms don't see every mass. And your monthly exam, your monthly exam can really help you and save your life. I know women, um, Catherine Burke, um, Soror, you know Tanya, Burke, Tanya, you know Tanya Burke, um, talks about as well. I wish I could hashtag right now her, but I can't. So I'm gonna have to come back. I'll come back. I'll come back and I'll hashtag her. Um, how she had a mammogram, but the um, the mammogram didn't catch the mass. Okay, so I got to say that. Do your monthly exams. Do your monthly self-breast exams. Encourage the women in your life to do that. Encourage the women in your life to do that. So calcifications. Calcifications were seen in mine. Okay, so y'all know Dr. Google. Man, doctors, we also hate Dr. Google, but Google is a wealth of information. No, it's a, wow, it's a wealth of information. All right, so... Calcifications. Okay, you want me to have another mammogram. So then the next day, <laughs> I was like, I know I'm not waiting till this is February. I'm not waiting until next week. We got to do this mammogram tomorrow. So actually, yes, the next day I go in and I get the um, the diagnostic mammogram of my right breast. Okay, so I sit down with him that same day because that's just who I am. Okay, um, I, I'm not being any, I'm, that's just who I am. Okay, I'm going to sit down with the doctor. These are the questions I have and everybody should be that way. I encourage you, you know, to have your questions written down before you go see a doctor. You know, you you search on Google, you already know your questions. Don't be scared to ask them. Don't be scared. But I sat down with the radiologist. Very nice. You know, they all have been very nice. I sat down with him and um, he showed me the calcification, the one area that he was concerned about. A little bit, a little bit of concern, you know, he he, he kind of didn't make it seem as serious. Although for me, I'm like, oh my God, what you put? But he kind of didn't make it seem as serious. And um, I was like, well, what should I do? You know, they take into account family history. Well, I mean, in, in ranking, you know, the score. Well, I don't really have women in my family that um, have had breast cancer. So, well, yeah, I get a, I get a negative for that. You don't, I don't get a point for that. Um, and so they, they factor in several things. I'm not a radiologist, okay. But they factor in several things in determining the score and um, letting you know how, you know, the severity of it, if you need to have further testing or not. So for me, even though I asked, should I get a mammo? Should I get genetic testing? Um, should I get an MRI? I, I don't know what I just said. Should I get an MRI? Should I get genetic testing? Should I see a breast surgeon? Those are the questions that I asked him. No, 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 no. It's likely but not. Likely but not. No, 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 no. Like at that time, it was like 11%, oh, 11% chance of cancer. No, 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 no. No, you know, no family history. These are calcifications. Um, you know, micro calcifications. A lot of times they're benign. Oh, yeah, no. Just come back in six months. So... Um, instead of six months, I go back in five months because that's just, you know, I'm nervous. You know, you're nervous, you're anxious, you want to know, um, you're scared. Even the best Christians, you know, you, your faith, you know, can wander, wave some, and, you know, you wonder, you know, okay, I, what's going on, God? You know, I want to make sure. I want to make sure it's negative and it's benign. And so um, that was around July. Different radiologists, same place, different radiologists. Nice. I sat down with all of them. And um, also, benign. Oh, yeah, this is like a benign. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can get ultrasound. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what well, the other radiologist said, well, um, I don't know. You, you don't have to get ultrasound, but if you want to get ultrasound, you can get ultrasound. But it's like a benign. Really? Okay. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. Likely benign. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. 
But what I want to say real quick before I get to my most recent results is this. Cancer patients, people that are that are have been told that they likely have cancer or people that um, have cancer or people that are have, are dying or near death. It, it happens. I, I'm not, I can't sugarcoat it. You know, like going through this process and you facing, you know, a grave diagnosis. Um, no one understands that better than those who have been told that or who have, even, even if your family member, you know, had cancer, you don't understand um, unless you've been told that. Um, and so what it means to me, what I'm, you know, gathering in my journey, in my meditation, my prayer, in my meditation, and the message and the meaning, because he told me I got to share the journey. He told me. Um, is that when you are faced with cancer, because I don't think I mentioned this yet, but within the last month, two months, I have, I mean, I've known people that have been diagnosed with cancer, that have been told they are likely facing cancer, um, serious within the last month or two months i'm like oh my god like what's going on the last month or two we were supposed to do a video on thyroid and it was just like whoa, 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 whoa. this person this person this person has cancer this person is, may have cancer this person is going through the test and then what well, what so there's a message and there's a meaning in this for those patients that are facing cancer and so if you can if you will definitely hashtag share this with someone um, this isn't about me. This isn't about Dr. Jerisa, Dr. Barry. This ain't about no secure fertility. There is no app for this, okay? This is just sharing motivation, inspiration, insight, message and meaning, encouragement for those that are facing, maybe not even a cancer diagnosis, but are facing some sort of storm. And how are you going to get through that? Cancer. As ER physicians, we see death all the time. And I, I actually, I got to say this. I wish I could hashtag. I'm going to have to do it later. Hashtag a Tatiana Jefferson. Anxiety. They gave me anxiety just hearing her story and hearing what happened. Um, as ER physicians, we see death all the time. All the time. I hate to say it. And it's nothing bad. Because we have to do it to take care of our patients. But we can become immune sometimes to death. If we can numb is more of the word. Uh, because we see it all the time. And we can't have our emotions take over us. Because I got to save your life or try to save your life. And then get to the other person. And so we are trained to do that. But I say that to say that when you are facing something like cancer. What I am realizing And go with me because I I can speak on it. You know, sometimes you don't vote, you can't speak. I'm, I can speak on this. You may disagree with me if you've never had to experience this or anything like that. Um, but I can speak on it. And I can truly say that um, my word for cancer patients, patients that are going through the testing, you've been told like I have. You go from being fine to not being fine. Things happen quick fast hurry, is that you get an opportunity to say goodbye. Okay, I'm going to say that one more time. You get an opportunity to say goodbye. You get an opportunity to get things right. You get an opportunity to plan. You get an opportunity to apologize, to say I'm sorry. And so I wonder what it would be. This is what came to me. I wonder what the world would be like if all of us black, white, yellow, brown, would live each day as though you have been told you likely have cancer or that you likely will die. How would that change your perspective on how you going to act? Would you flick off that person? Would you tell that person to go sideways? Would you fight, fuss? Would you be petty? Would you have road rage? Whatever it is at that moment, if we thought about, you know what? Tomorrow really is not promised. And so for cancer patients, you do have an opportunity 
to plan. You do have an opportunity to live. You do have an opportunity. You know, tomorrow, your know, tomorrow still may come. But see, I see people in the emergency room that they die right now, you know? And so their tomorrow doesn't come. But for a cancer patient, there is hope. There is hope. And you can plan, you can live, you can travel, you can get things in order. But those people like a Tatiana Jefferson, those people like Las Vegas, you know, the shooting in Las Vegas, the shooting in Orlando, car accidents. Y'all, oh my gosh, if my husband, <laughs> I always talk about car accidents because we see it. We see people just like that, gone. Here, now, gone the next minute. Not even gone the next day. Gone the next minute. They didn't have cancer. They weren't told they were going to have cancer. They didn't have time to reflect some meaning in life and and, you know, um, life has been great. Life has been this struggle. How God got me through that storm. And yes, and let me help this person. And let me travel. Let me, let me call this girlfriend I haven't talked to in a while. Let me say how. They didn't have that. And it's, ooh, it, it's eerie to say that, but as cancer patients, patients who are facing that, you have that opportunity. Yes, you have a grave diagnosis. You may or may not have a great prognosis. You know, diagnosis doesn't equal great prognosis. Um, but you get what that other person did not get. And that's the top three causes of death. Number one cause of death is what? Heart disease. So if you're walking around with uncontrolled high blood pressure, guess what? Guess what? You're in the number one lead above cancer. You're in the number one leading cause of death because uncontrolled high blood pressure, uncontrolled pressure, whatever you want to call it, is the number one cause of death. Number two, cancer. Number three, accidental deaths. Accidental deaths. Gunshots, car accidents, car accidents, fatal. It happens. Gunshots. They don't have a warning. We're all going to die. But some of us are gifted with, and I say gifted, yes, I did. Some of us are gifted with a time line to get things right. As I remember talking to two cancer patients, well, one, I'm sorry, one is still going through testing. The other one has been diagnosed with a stage four cancer. I'm not going to say the type of cancer. It's not breast. Um, depressed, down, weary. I mean, that person is 70 plus years old. Live life. Live life. Depressed, down, discouraged. Oh my God, because they are facing something hard, something, um, you know, stage four, cancer. How do you get through that? Um, you have time, you have time, you're gifted with time as an ER physician, as America's ER physician, I'm telling you as someone who has been there and is going there. Okay. Likely cancer. I, you know, I can relate. You have time. You have time to pray and meditate and get things in order. You have time. Not everybody gets that. Not everybody gets that. And so when I'm, as I reflect, as I ask God after prayer to give me the message, because like, I don't know, I really didn't want to have to do this, like for real, for real, for real. I have no shame in saying that. I really didn't have to do this because I'm in faith. I'm going in faith that my results will be benign, but there's a message in this because it didn't have to be this way. It didn't have to come back like this. So if it comes back, there's something because oh, I pray, you know, my husband, we pray for guidance, direction for him to order our steps. Nobody's perfect. Forgive me, Lord. But what is it I'm supposed to get from this? Cause you're doing it again. And so to take the time to take the time, don't rush, don't rush. Don't rush. Take the time and see the meaning in the message, the meaning in the message. 
Elevation requires separation. You know, elevation requires separation. Sometimes you're going through storms. You got to separate yourself. You know, everybody can't be in the elevator. Maybe too much weight, you know. Um, but what is it for um, for cancer patients, for patients who may be uh, facing a grave diagnosis or even just a storm? You lost your job. I've been there before. Hashtag Catherine Burke, who is a breast cancer survivor, helped save my residency position job when, at that time, I couldn't focus, anxiety, fear because of a domestic violence relationship. I got out of the situation real quick, real quick. But yes, I've been there where you've lost a job and you don't know you know, what you're going to do or, you know, where the income is going to come from. You know, you feel like you are hopeless. One other thing that's come to me, and I got to say this, and then, oh, and I, two things I got to say. Two things I got to say before I go. I got to give you the scriptures, the scriptures that I'm leaning on. And the second thing, mental health awareness. We talk a lot about that. We talk a lot about that. Um... Anxiety, depression. When you're face, when you're face with a storm, whatever it is, storms happen all the time. There's three. There's, I have to say it on the next video because there's one other thing I want to say too. Um. But, and I got to say, Ty Tribbett, you know, there's there's some people that, you know, right now, um, whether they're singers, pastors, ministers that um, I am studying. And, uh, of course, Sarah Jakes Roberts, we love her. Ty Tribbett, love him. Because in one of his videos, he says, and I don't know if he said it or someone else, or if it's unknown, but he said it in his message that um, never make a permanent decision in a painful moment. That struck me. That struck me because so many people do that. They make permanent decisions in a painful moment. And that painful moment may be short term. That actually is one of the scriptures that I have. Um, that The light affliction may be for a short time. So never make a permanent decision in a painful situation. Hello? Suicide. Murder. Theft. Anger. Those, yes, we all have painful moments. But don't make a permanent decision in that painful moment. We all know joy comes in the morning and all that, but don't make a permanent decision. Put the gun down. Put the gun down. Put the gun down. Somebody needs to hear that. Don't make a permanent decision in a painful moment. The scriptures that I'm going by, um, Psalm 27, 13, Psalm 27, I can't read it. Y'all know sometimes you're in, uh, in church and this is my, my husband, he break out his Bible or, you know, he break out his phone rather. And I'm like, why are you, why are you doing that? They don't, they don't have a scripture on the monitor. Like, I, you know, I'm, I, I'm just that, I'm that kind of, <laughs> uh, they don't have it on the monitor. Um, so, but Psalm 27, you know, it's long, I'm not going to read it, but Psalm 27, 13 is actually, um, a song, William Murphy, William Murphy. Thank you for everlasting God. I love that song. That is my song that I'm leaning on during this time. Um, I will remain confident in this. I will remain confident in this, that I will see the goodness of the Lord while in the land of the living is the scripture. I will remain confident in, in this, that I will see the goodness of the Lord while in the land of the living is a scripture. That's Psalm 27, 13, Psalm 91, Psalm 91. That's been pretty popular. That's been pretty popular. 
um, with hashtag at uh, Shanika Scarborough and at, uh, I can't do it right now, on my desktop, I can't do it, and at Angie Gardner, yes, I, I, Psalm 91, that's in the number, yes, I love that, y'all gotta read Psalm 91, listen, if you are facing anything, whoo, Psalm 91 is a beast, Romans 8.18, Isaiah 54.4, and 2 Corinthians 417. Those are the five um, scriptures that uh, I'm leaning on. And uh, 2 Corinthians is, um, but this light affliction, but this light affliction, you think it's heavy, but this light affliction worketh for us, worketh for us. That's another video. Worketh for us. Something far greater, far exceeding and eternal. So, it's temporary. It's temporary. Um, and while you're going through it, cancer patients, the gift of goodbye, the gift of pre preparation that not everyone gets. As an ER physician, I am telling you, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough to face. I know. I know. But you, you know, and, and it's, you know, because, of the, you know, those that die suddenly, you, you can't have that conversation. But I'm having conversations now with people that are in despair, people that are discouraged, people that are going through chemo, people that are going through testing right now within the last couple of months. There have been several. And they are nervous, scared, hopeful, faithful, yes. But that journey is woo, a lot of emotions, a lot of emotions. And so um, you get the opportunity, you get the gift of preparation, you get the gift of goodbye. Um, I'm waiting for my biopsy. I have decided to wait for the biopsy. I have decided to continue to stay in the message, continue to stay in the time to see message, meaning, message, meaning, purpose. And um, believing believing that the results will be fine, but the journey is necessary. The journey is necessary for me, yes, but for someone else. We're giving away 10 mammograms. Make sure you like, um, if you like it, if you share this, you can also give my email. Uh, the best email is drjurisa at gmail. For anyone you know in South Florida who is uninsured, uninsured, we're giving away mammograms this month. They don't have to have it this month. They do have to see us. They have to get the script, okay? We're not going to charge for the doctor business, so that's a lot. We're giving away doctor business and mammograms, y'all. Are you kidding? What? Me, Dr. Barry, Dr. Adam Barry, yes. Thank God we're able to do this. Thank God we're able to do this. Um, we're giving away mammograms, doctor visits. They can email me, and we're giving away 10, and we are doing it in honor of those women that um, are breast cancer survivors. I've mentioned two already. You can hashtag at please uh, breast cancer survivor, um, hashtag at Catherine Burke, hashtag at T Burke, Tanya Burke. There's so many, there's so many I know. I gotta say Alexa, Alexia Gaffney. I gotta say her, follow her because she talks about her journey with breast cancer. Um, hashtag Karen Allen Means. Um, I just found out last week that, you know, she was a breast cancer survivor. Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your journey. Um, Geneva, John, oh, so many, so many, uh, Eugenia Way, uh, Jen Hart, Jen Hart, hashtag at Jen Hart. Okay. So, um, I'll check in. I don't know if I'll check in tomorrow. The weekends, y'all y'all don't be on, on Facebook. Y'all, I don't know. It's social media on Facebook. You know, you gotta live your life. You gotta live your life on the weekend, you know. So um I'm gonna have the man, I'm gonna have the biopsy. I'm gonna have the biopsy next week. I'll check in before that. And um in the meantime, share this. Oh, my email. My email is drjerisa at gmail.com. That's D-R-J-E-R-I-S-A at gmail.com where you can email me someone that's uninsured or underinsured and you know they need a mammogram. We'll get that done. We'll include them in 
uh, the number. And in January, we're going to also be giving away pap smears. We've done that before for a couple of times, a couple years. Um, and we're going to do that again in January, which is Cervical Cancer Awareness Month. Um, God is good. Um, God is good. He's worthy to be praised no matter what. And um, see the beauty. It's easier said than done, I know. But I can say it because I'm going through it. See the beauty. Yeah, you're going to have anxiety. My leg gets tapping. My husband can tell you. My leg, my right leg get tapping. I'm like, oh, what's going on? I be tapping that right leg. I can't see no comments. I don't know what's going on. But I just get tapping. Anxiety. What? Anxiety. Yeah, I comb my hair today. Anxiety. You be like this. You be looking like, oh, Lord. Eyelash missing. You know, I got some lip gloss. I ain't got my earrings on, yeah. But I was like, well, let me, you know, when you get anxiety, you just, you know, everybody handles anxiety differently. You know, some people drank, you know, they had a glass of wine. Don't think you just have your glass of wine, you have anxiety. Hello, you have anxiety, you know. But there is a way, you know, to get through the anxiety with prayer and whatever else, you know, you do, you know. Hopefully it's legal, like CBD. But anyway, um... I'll see y'all next time. I am Dr. Jerisa. Did I even tell? I don't even know if I told y'all who I was. Did I say that at the beginning? I don't know. But you guys have a great night. God is good. Those scriptures, share them with your family member, um, your loved one that is um, going through a difficult time. It doesn't have to be cancer, um, but share that. Um, until the next time, also ladies, uh, Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month. I know. I know I am one and eight. I am one and eight. Um, but tomorrow is not promised. As I mentioned to another young lady earlier this year, you trying, you trying, you doing IVF, all this IVF, IVF. You're going crazy. You're going crazy with all this IVF stuff. Um, don't lose your present because of future. Don't lose your present because of a future want that you're trying to, yeah, I can say it. Yes, I have a son. Thank God. We, you know, but I could die tomorrow. You know what I mean? It, so anybody could. So be careful what you yearn for, what you, you know, you make your all. Um, because it could be gone, you know? So um, I got to go. Um, I will see y'all in a couple of days with update from my journey update from um any testing or physician communication and um i look forward to your emails for those that um are in need of a mammogram or pap you know that's january but you know we'll, we're gonna take care of that too so you guys have a great evening i am dr jerisa dr jerisa berry b-e-r-r-y God still sits on the throne, and I will see y'all soon.